Hello everyone, welcome to Wolf for Programming. Today I want to talk more about VC package and specifically VC package versioning. So if you didn't know, VC package is Microsoft's open source package manager for C++. Why do we need a package manager, dependency manager for C++? Because historically sharing code and reusing code in C++ has been very difficult and that's really important for building um, complex software quickly. Most other languages, they have well-established package managers that can reach out and grab other people's code that they've written and they've tested so that we're not always remaking the wheel, right? We need to be able to reuse things to build software quickly and easily. And if C++ doesn't adopt these new things, it's going to die as a language. And I think C++ is a great language uh, for many reasons. Um, it's already solved a lot of problems that newer languages are trying to solve today. It's got a lot of stuff that you love. Um, it supports every kind of programming, imaginable, function-oriented, um, object-oriented, you know, recursive, all those good things. All right, but more to the point, um, recently I found out that VC Package Manager now supports package versionings. So before, if you wanted to install a package with this package manager, you had to install each one individually. So if you want to share your code with someone else, they have to issue all the install commands separately. Not anymore. And I haven't seen anyone else on the internet talk about this. There was a small blog post put out by Microsoft that said versioning is supported, but only in Windows and with Visual Studio but it's, it actually works just fine on Linux. So the trick to it is you have to create this file called vcpkg.json in the root directory. And you basically have a dependency section where you list the dependencies. So in here, we're listing three libraries, um, CPR, RapidJSON, and Liberty Kafka. So you might can guess that in this example project, we are going to be talking to Kafka, which is a messaging bus, and it's going to be able to read it. It's going to be able to read JSON off of the bus and play back what's in one of the fields of the JSON message. Um, yeah, and so for this project, I put up a Docker Compose environment so that you can download it and it'll build all the dependencies um, for you. In VS Code, we can reopen it in a container. So VS Code has the ability to run from inside of a container. You don't have to do it this way, um, but that's what I'm gonna do here. Okay, so how does this packaging work? So the first thing you wanna do um, with any VC package project is you want to add it as a git sub module and I've already done that here so all I have to do to download it is run this um, command here which I put there in the readme and um, it's gonna go and pull the package manager for us and it also pulls another library Kafka library by Morgan and Stanley they made a really nice modern C++ 17 um, Kafka library, I really liked it. I didn't see it in the package manager yet. It's pretty new. Um, but um, anyway, I pulled that as a sub module so we can also use that. So the first thing you wanna do after you um, pull in the, the sub modules is you wanna run the bootstrap script. And you can also disable metrics because that's enabled by default. We don't want Bill Gates looking in our windows at night. Cool stuff, looks like it's bootstrapped. Now, here's the magic of versioning. So we're gonna run this command and you have to pass in the feature because it's kind of a beta feature still. And it pulled in all the packages and now we're good to go. We can actually, um, we can actually go ahead and build this thing. I'm going to build it in production mode because that Kafka library, it, uh, it's got a bunch of debug outputs. I don't know how to get rid of debug outputs in a debug mode for libraries pulled in, but 
still have debugging for my main um, local C++ build. So if anyone knows how to disable debug for libraries, but not uh, your, your file here that you're compiling, compiling locally, let me know in the comments. So we can go ahead and run our make command. It's built it. Let's go ahead and run it. And we're using Sasso plain text off. If you're familiar with Kafka, that's just a way of passing in the username and password. Oh, we're already in the build directory. Okay, and we're listening on the Kafka bus on topic test. So if you didn't know about Kafka, it follows a pub sub pattern. Now we need to test this somehow. Let's hold off on running that for a second and let's open a split window. Split bash window. So in this project, I have a script folder and it's got a Python script. And what the Python script does is act as the producer. So our C++ program is pulling from the bus, so it's the consumer. It's reading whatever it finds off the topic. This, Kafka, this uh, Python program is working as the producer, so it's going to write to the bus, and it's going to read from data.json, which has a bunch of JSON lines, uh, and the C++ program, which we have in the apps folder here, is going to parse it Document D, this is the rapid JSON library, because we're using rapid JSON document here. And it's going to print out the contents of the message field in the JSON object. So this is a pretty standard flow you might have at work. You have one service writing to the bus, and you have another service pulling from the bus. Maybe you want to do JSON for easier, um, you know, easier readability and it's going to read it and print it out to us here. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out. Python 3 produce.py, it's writing to the bus. Our C++ read the program. Epstein didn't kill himself, but you didn't see that coming. That's basically it, isn't that cool? So here's VC package pulling in all these packages automatically so you can distribute this program to your coworkers, to your friends and they're going to be able to pull in all the c++ packages you didn't have to write a json parser i've actually known people that will write their own json parser you didn't have to pull in kafka stuff and commit it to git you don't have to because this will pull it in at the exact version you want to share automatically that way someone else isn't running a different version in this case rapid json didn't have a version and the way I determined that is you can go into VC package, the folder, you can ask VC package for, you know, a package. In this case, let's say rapid JSON. Um, we're gonna search for it and it found it, but there's no versioning. So I couldn't give it a version. Um, on the flip side, if we're looking for this Kafka library, it would be Kafka we see we've got a version listed. So we know for a fact, even if they update this version in the future, we're still gonna pull this old one. But yeah, that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments section about VC package um, versioning. I think this is really great. This is gonna make it really easy to share code and to pull in all your dependencies once, exactly like you would with pip or with NPM, or with Rust Cargo, or with Go modules. Every modern language needs good dependency management, and this is turning out really well. I really like it. Thanks, everyone.